we doing today? So I'm coming to you from beautiful Colorado in Estes Park and I figure the background would be a nice change from my face in our backyard. I know you love that but today I want to talk about core training and this is a really really misunderstood concept. Everybody thinks of core training as being just your six pack and just doing a bunch of crunches. That's a really short-sighted view of what it is. So one of the first things to talk about is what is your core. In reality, your core is everything from your mid-thigh, so these muscles around your hips, all the way up to your diaphragm. So everything from here to here is your core, all right? And that isn't just limited to the front of your body too, that's the 360 degree profile, all right? The point of your core is to stabilize your spine, to keep your spine from moving, to prevent bulging discs, any herniations or problems to get paralyzed. That is the most important thing for your body, to protect your brain and protect your spine. Otherwise, you're done. C5, staying alive kind of thing. If you hurt below here, it's over. So thinking about that purpose of the core, you want to think about how to actually train it. And it does not mean the traditional training under reps to, to fatigue, like doing a bunch of sit-ups and crunches. We want to think more about bracing and stabilizing, engaging muscles all the way around, okay? So when you're looking at the core, the point of it is to train resisting movement, to create a homeostasis for the spine. So what you're looking at is anti-movement. That's an anti-flexion, an anti-extension, an anti-rotation, and an anti-lateral flexion and extension. An example of each, so an anti-flexion is anything we're using the glutes to pick up. So that could be a squat, a deadlift, a good morning, anything where you're preventing the, the collapse of your back and your hips into that flexion. An anti-extension is going to be the opposite way around. So with that, we're thinking of a traditional plank, your ab rollouts, if a physio ball, or any type of movement that prevents your body from dumping into this extension. The anti-rotation is a little bit simpler to look at. Holding a band, resisting motion laterally, so that's a controlled resisting of that rotational movement. You can think side plank reach throughs are another example of that. An anti-lateral flexion and extension, that's going to be a straight up side plank. You're preventing the lateral extension or the lateral flexion. You can do just holding a side plank the video I put up in the story the other day with Darren holding a, the uh, adductor side plank or you can do even just hip ups where you're moving back and forth. It's under control. The point of it all is that you're preventing movement from happening and taking your spine out of homeostasis. Okay? So the final thing to think about is if you can't breathe, and I, what I mean by breathe is when you're under load, if you're squatting or moving or carrying something and all of a sudden you're getting red faced and you're getting short of breath or seeing stars, if you can't breathe while under load, you have no access to your core. So what we want to talk about is called diaphragm of breathing. And this is a huge subject. And if you've ever done yoga or Pilates, there's no way you've gotten out of that without hearing them talk about belly breathing or breathing deeply. A quick cue I want you to think about is to take your fingers and press them into your stomach, okay? So take a big breath in and try and press into your fingers, okay? So you can see that as opposed to a big breath into your chest and shoulders, which is a up here, okay? That's the first one. And then I want you to be able to breathe out and press back into your fingers. So the full thing will look like this. You take a big breath in, and then a big breath out. And you're gonna press into your fingers both ways. Inhale, exhale. And if you can't press into your fingers and create engagement with those muscles, you're missing an entire neuromuscular control of those muscles. We'll work over some cues and exercises to develop that in the future, but for today, try that cue. All right, if you have any questions on how to better train your core, if you're always training your core and your back hurts, or you're, you're not seeing progress in removing back pain, or getting a stronger core that translates to your core movements, leave a message, DM, comment, reach out, okay? This is what I do. I'll walk with you and teach you how to do it well, all right? Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.